All right, we had to let let off right there. So that last part, part four, kind of ended a little bit sun, suddenly because we wanted to get this last verse of this passage of Potomi's version of the Awaki uh, Mishtia or the Gnostic myth right here where he says, he, he quotes, uh, um, I think, um, I think this is, this is Galatian, but, but he quotes right here where he says, Hawadi Apollos, he discloses and makes mention of the mezcal of the cross. And we're speaking about even the inner meaning of us carrying our cross, which is a, a prerequisite. I mean, not just as a pictorial cross or a handheld cross, you know what I'm saying, but the real cross. You know what I'm saying? Just stand up and stretch out your arms, the, carrying that cross within, within the eye, within eye and eye, right? For the word now, the word of the mezcal of the cross is folly, it's foolishness to those who are perishing. So I'm speaking about the cross and the crucifixion. Some get, oh, yeah, well, it still is a myth or whatever like that. And, and, and they're perishing. Look at, their, look at their way of living. But to I and I who are being saved, who are overcomers, right, it is a power, a chayel of Kedamari Chayla Selassie of Hashem, right? It's a, it's a power. It's the power of God, right? It's the true power, the true chayel, right? Eli, Eli. It's the true my power, my power. But he says, far be it for me to glory in anything except the cross. Far be it to glory. A lot of folks glory in what they did in their own works and their own righteousness and their own helping folks out. You understand? And, and, and for anyone other than a disciple or a true Christian, you understand, I could understand that sort of glory. That's a worldly sort of glory. But for I and I who truly are following him, and you can't say you're a Christian unless you're a false Christian if you're not seeking to follow him. You know what I'm saying? Or you, or, or, or you worship him in vain, as he says himself, teaching the commandments of men what men and people say. So far be it from me to glory, right, to kubr, right, or to have kubr, right, in anything except, in anything else than the cross of the anointed, then the cross, the mezcal of the anointed, of Jesus Christos, right, to, to, to glory in anything else, by which, now get this, the world, right, Babylon world has been crucified to I and I, has been crucified to I. Babylon's world now, in the maturity of the walk and the carrying of the cross, Babylon world is crucified to you and I to the world. So it's like, it's like um, zero, zero, right? You know, it's like what, when they say deuces, so to speak. It's like I'm crucified, the world is crucified to me. You understand? So it basically, it becomes a boundary. It's a spiritual protection as well for even your soul, your psyche. It gives your soul balance. You know what I'm saying? It gives your soul balance, and one is not caught up so much on the ego. And, and the shego, you understand, because that's what, where Satan wants to keep us caught up on. So the the mystery, the mystery of the cross, right, is is so much more than we've learned from a Western Gentile misinterpretation, loss in translation. And this is the half of the story when we talk about the Tawahedo, when we talk about the. The, 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 the true ancient Ethiopian orthodoxy, when we get into the teachings, right, into the word, right, it says man does not live by what bread alone, but by every word. You know what I'm saying? This is why they try to keep the people ignorant and illiterate and don't want them to read, you understand, and learn the word because when you really are filled with that anointing, you overcome them, you, you break free. And this is what the Passover, the Pesach, Right? This is the, the real um, reason, right? the real reason for the season. This is the real reason for the season, right? And um, there's so much more about this as well, but make this a basic foundation of meditation on the cross. First of all, you know, Yeshua himself says, whoever does not lift up their cross, right, and follow me. So first is lifting up the cross, right, just as uh, uh, Simon of, the, of Serene, 
right? Some say Simon Niger, maybe from Nigeria, who they would call Simon Nigger, right? And that's right there in the Bible, right? It goes way back to the Roman time, Niger, Nigger, you know what I'm saying, which means black, where we get negro, so forth and so on. Remember how he carried the cross. It's like the black man, in that sense, carrying that cross. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also the black woman also has a powerful role in it when we recognize even the Mary, the Mariam types. You see, Satan wants you to get alienated to your true image, but for you to believe the false image projected by the ego and shego. See, it's the cross, which functions both as that positive as well as that negative discipline of God. You understand the, the cross, and, but, but it's a negative in the sense that it negates all of that worldliness where the world now is crucified to you and you are crucified to the world. So, so it can't, in, that, in other words, it, it can't touch this. You know what I'm saying? Because your soul is saved. Your soul has put on Christos, has put on the Moshiach, has put on the Spirit of God by putting on your lips the Word of God and in your heart the Word of God. So he says, whoever doesn't lift up their cross and follow him cannot be his disciple. And he gives a certain qualification for discipleship. And that, that's the first level one really has to meditate on. You understand? And, and, and approach it in the, in, the, in the righteousness way. You understand? Because some folks approach it in a certain way where they build up anger, you understand, on those who they're supposed to cut off in that sense instead of approaching it in the way that Yeshua says to approach it, which is to forgive. You see, because if we don't forgive, then we are not forgiven. You understand? So you can look at it even at that immature level selfishly. You understand? To forgive others means to let go of that so you can sup with Yeshua and so Yeshua can work in your heart, in your mind, strengthen you so that in all of your activities, you are blessed, you, are, you prosper, you are more than a conqueror, right? In the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, Ketamawi, Hala Salasi, Siyumek, Ziaviha, Nagusa, Neges, Ze Ethiopia. Lift up the cross, follow I. That's what Yeshua says. Lift up the cross, right? Follow I, right? And remember, the cross is the tree of life. That's why Ainai's Arastafari say, Ainai na die, right? But the reason why has somewhat been lost. You understand? It's like the Holy Grail. You understand? What's the missing key? You understand? What's that key? It's that cross, which also functions, if you understand the processional cross, as a, as a key. An outer key in the world, it can function as a key to a door, Right, and let's see if we can show this, like the outer cross right here, you understand, as a key, right? But then there's an inner mystery. You understand? So maybe the outer example we get first, but it's that inner mystery that we must get, you understand, in order to overcome, right? Now, the bounding activity, once again, he says, I have not come to bring shalom. Yes, we say shalom because Yeshua, Jesus Christos, he is our shalom. His word is our shalom. So when you go into any difficulty, meditate on his word. Call his word in as witness. And, and your faith in that word and your overcoming in that word because that is the glory of his majesty. For my part, I glory in the Bible. Is it not written in the Bible? I have not come to bring peace. Right? We've come to bear witness too. Yeshua. We've come to bear witness to him who is the true peace, right? But that sword is the word of God. You see, that sword is the word of God, so it also acts in that boundary. It's like the minus sign. It's like the sword right there. It's, it's, it's the cutting now. It's the correction is cutting, right? The punishment, right? The, reme the remedial punishment, right, is, 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 is like that sword as well as the reproof is like all the chastening is like that sword because there he's pruning I and I, right? There he's pruning I and I so we can be full of fruit and, 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 and growth and can have true growth up to him and in him in all things. So brothers and sisters, just wanted to share this particular part here concerning the 
the allegory, right, or the allegories, right, the metaphors, they are metaphors, but they are living metaphors if they are living in us in spirit and in truth where his word, that's where the word must be implanted, right, engrafted, because that engrafted word that is able to save, right, our souls, right, it's that engrafted word. So when we're speaking about tawahido, it also means digestion, right? Mawahad, like to digest something. So as we begin to eat that word, so we're eating that word, you understand? And we're meditating that word, right? Yovas, and we are meditating on Yeshua in us through that word and manifest in our liberty, manifest in our walk. You understand? With each of I and I doing I and I, First part, that's the first part. He says, lift up your cross. And we would be amiss, right, if we um, did not remind both ourselves, right, and you all, my beloved brothers and sisters, about that aspect, you understand, about that precept. Actually, it's the first precept. He says, lift, before he says, follow me, right, he says, lift up, right, thy cross, lift up your cross, Right, count the cost because you because now you now you're under the shema now you're under instruction now you're under knowledge you can't say you don't know you understand now you're under training right in its positive aspect in the negative aspect well it's correction you understand and it says that whatever child the father loves Abba loves he's correct right and as as, as the reading that we just read. It said that when in, in Corinthians, that, um, that the chastening, when we judge, when we begin to recognize, oh, Chan, that, that, that's me right there. I'm doing that. That's wrong. Just say that's wrong right there. Pray for the strength. Pray for grace to overcome that. But you have to be of a willing mind to make our wills obedient to good influences. There's none good but Jah, right? And we know Jah through his word and through the deeds he does. Right, both within I and I and without. You know what I'm saying? But pay attention to this particular teaching, brothers and sisters. We're gonna we're gonna sum up right right here and I and uh, I pray for I and I that we pass over even to a higher height, you know what I'm saying, in this Moadim, in this in this feast. You know, as the word said, let us you know, let us keep the feast. Right? We are to keep the feast, but not with the old leaven. Right, cast out that old leaven. Right, you know, you cast out the wonder bread and all of that too. You understand? But really, cast out that old leaven from your hearts and your minds. Right, because.